Welcome to this week's edition of Oregon Minute. Each week, OCA Media features a guest or community leader who shares information on topics important to you, our listeners and viewers. New weekly episodes are broadcast on our cable channels as well as on demand through our YouTube channel. Visit OCAMedia.com for more information. The Oregon Minute is brought to you with financial support from friends of OCA Media and viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to this week's episode of the Oregon Minute. I'm Tom Kirchner for your host. Here in the village of Oregon, if you travel as far as you can on South Main Street, you'll come to Anderson Farm County Park, an area of trees, paths, and some dog parks. In the last few years, there's been a lot of changes in the park, and to give us some updates on the park, we've invited Ro Parker, who has been very involved in this development. Ro, welcome to the Oregon Minute. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. You've been, a, you've been very active here in Oregon for quite a while. A lot of people know you, but not all of our listeners will have an opportunity to have met you. Um, can you just give us a little bit about yourself? What brought you to Oregon? Uh, sure. I grew up in, in Milwaukee and then went to school in UW Oshkosh. And the, the notable thing there is I had my first park development uh, activity in Oshkosh on the campus at uh, UWO building uh, Jacob Shapiro Park along the Fox River. And also at that time, uh, as an elected official on the county board, I started a community gardens project in Oshkosh that I believe is still here today. Uh, and that was uh, uh, around 1972. And um, moved to Janesville, worked with the community action program and started one of Wisconsin's first uh, emergency food pantries. Uh, we did this for Beloit organized uh, low-income people with the uh, uh, one of the churches in town. Came to Madison in 76, moved to the town of Dunn uh, in the Oregon School District in 79. Uh, we liked the, uh, the area. We wanted a little bit more land. I'm a big gardener. Came to the town of Oregon in 1991. And uh, we've got a couple acres here in the western part of the township. And uh, I've got a, a number of garden projects going, so springtime is always a, a time of interest for me to see what uh, what's going to come about. So, so then, how did you become interested in the Anderson Farm County Park? Well, my interest started from the activities uh, initiated by the Dane County Parks Department. The Anderson family. Now, this would include Lyman Anderson at the time, as well as his wife Patricia Anderson. We're working with Dane County to uh, create a park uh, where it's located now off of Union Road. And the, the family worked with uh, the county. The, the county eventually uh, bought uh, in two different opportunities, a number of acreage on, east, uh, on the east side and west side of Union Road. And that was uh, completed around 2011. Uh, part of the development process included developing a master plan for the park. They worked with a professional planning organization. There were about eight or nine different community input meetings. I went to one of those, was intrigued by that. I knew I was going to be, become semi-retired and I thought, well, this could be kind of an interesting project. And I thought I'd stick my toe in the, uh, the water, so to speak. <laughs> and see how it would go for the first year. And if we could uh, do something that would benefit the community, it'd be uh, a lot of satisfaction for me. So it was a small beginning back in 2011. Sure, sure. So the Anderson Farm County Park, there's actually been some things up there in that area for a while. There's a sign up there for the um, Arthur Schultz uh, Memorial Woods. And there's also some signs about Boy Scout troops and some things. So can you just give us a little bit of that background on the park? Uh, sure. The, the Arthur Schultz Memorial Forest is one of the main features of the, the park and was the first feature. It was certainly our first project. The area had uh, some trees, but not as, uh, as much as we know. The Anderson family worked with uh, several Boy Scout troops in the mid-1950s, and they planted uh, many of the trees. The area, so they planted the trees in the 1950s. Uh, it was a huge undertaking to maintain this and there was some neglect involved. A lot of invasive plants, trees came in, buckthorn. 
uh, box elder trees, honeysuckle, uh, different things like this. So when we came along in 2012, we decided to start a forest restoration project. Uh, it goes in two phases. Phase one, we're still in phase one. Phase two is going to be coming up uh, in the next year or two. And that the scouts were involved then in the mid 1950s. And I'm glad to say we work very closely with both uh, Boy Scout and Girl Scout troops in town for Eagle projects and Golden projects for them. So I, I've been up to the park a number of times. I know there's a, an entrance there at the end of South Main. You can also walk in, I believe over on the, it's over on the very east, kind of the Northeast corner of the park, but there's some parking yeah. lots. Can you talk about the location of the park, maybe the hours of the park, some of those kinds of things? Uh, sure, the, the park is very accessible in the sense that the uh, park is available from 5 a.m. until 10 p.m. in the evening. It's patrolled by rangers. Uh, there's a, a good uh, safe feeling when you're in the, uh, the park uh, during all hours. The entrances include two walk-in entrances, one at the south end of Main Street and one at uh, Ridgeview Lane. So the, the park is actually contiguous with the southern boundary of the village of Oregon, and it, it's literally that close. The access for cars are at 914 Union Road. That was the first small parking lot that's still there. It's paved over. And then we also have access to the dog park at 804 Union Road, which is uh, further south. You know, you mentioned the dog parks. I also saw some other, there's been a lot of brush clearing, uh, some new bike path. There's a new bike path through it. Can you just give us some of your recent addition, additions and what all has been going on in the park recently? Well, there's um, several different aspects to it with the forest restoration. That was our first project. We're still at it now, nine years later. But the, we're following uh, different uh, protocols and strategies developed by the county. Uh, Dane County Park oversees all of our volunteer activities. And you'll see that uh, we're putting into place many of the uh, strategies described by Doug Talmy in terms of how to restore forests. So a goal is to make forests sustainable and actually to the point of uh, if we could get it to regenerate itself without human interaction, uh, all the better. So we've been taking things out of the, uh, the forest. This has been an area of uh, many questions by people in the community. And uh, for example, box elder trees really can suffocate a, uh, a healthy oak tree. So we're making the oak trees a priority and that uh, we're, we have a little bit of an arboretum concept. We wanna preserve the hiking uh, aspects that are in the forest. There, so there's a, about a little under one mile of hiking trails and they're adjacent to the prairie. The, uh, the phase one I referred to was taking things out. And recently within the last two years, a lot of this was uh, in the last two or three months, spring of 2022, we've removed uh, a number of trees that were going to become dead within a couple of years. Uh, we'll be transitioning the, later this year to phase two, which is putting back understory trees understory bushes that, and keep in mind these will all be native uh, types of trees and plants and uh, we'll also be looking at ephemerals and other type of uh, plants. So this has been going on and in parallel was what we refer to as the the bike path and dog park project that uh, you were alluding to. Sure. This was a result of a number of needs assessment activities we conducted in 2000. 14, 15, and 16, uh, one of our uh, minor roles is to be an advocate for the community to Dane County. Uh, Dane County staff have been wonderful to work with. We uh, work hand in hand with them. Uh, they provide oversight, coaching, uh, instruction, and training on the different things we do. The, uh, the dog park and the bike path was a, a very large costly item. I think the cost is uh, over $500,000. So when you're proposing uh, projects like this, they need to get dovetailed into the county's five-year plan for parks uh, that needs to get into budgets. Uh, our needs are compared with others. Uh, the long story short here is the, uh, the bike path. We started working on the, uh, the path itself, clearing the, uh, the woods. The uh, the bike path in Dog Park is a two-year project. It started in 
2019 with clearing uh, invasive trees in the dog park that winter we planted prairies. This is the time of the year to uh, preferred time to plant prairie seed. And then in 2020, the foundation grading construction work started for both the bike path and dog park. Uh, the 2021 saw the completion of these activities and the dog park opened November 30th, uh, 2021. And uh, I'm glad to say we're gonna have our official grand opening May 19th and the community is invited. This will be in the afternoon between two and uh, 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, the dog park and bike path have been a, a huge success for a variety of reasons. Uh, we've been able to uh, copy some of the best practices of other dog parks in the county. And we've got some nice elevation change. Uh, we've got a good diversity of prairie plants that'll become more colorful as the years are gonna go by. So 2020, you. 2022 will be the most colorful year in the dog park. In addition, Oregon's very much into uh, the bicycling so that you could start at South Main Street, go on the bike path, come down to the dog park, and you will uh, have a short distance to connect with County Highway A. And the significance of this is that uh, we advocated for the reconstruction and repaving of County Highway A to the west uh, with bike lanes and that it's almost complete. I think there might be some construction going on this summer and the benefit, you could start in the village of Oregon, go down the bike path, get on County A and you could go all the way into Mount Vernon and you'd have access to County, uh, the County Park, uh, Donald Park out there. Right. right. So that uh, these things have been connected, running in a little bit of a parallel uh, process. Interesting. So one of the, I did go out on your webpage. Uh, there's an Anderson Park for our listeners. There's an Anderson uh, County or Anderson Farm County Parks uh, webpage. Um, but I noticed on there, there was a reference to the Anderson Farm Center. Can you tell us what that is? What, what are the activities that are going on with that? Uh, sure, we'd like to. This is part of what's referred to as our agricultural mission. This was included in the master plan. And, and keep in mind the master plan had different phases and phase one would be the development of the east side of Union Road. And it's, it's almost a little humorous. People talk about the park as being a nice little park and they're referring to the, the portion of acreage on the east side of uh, Union Road. And that's really the smaller parcel, the larger parcel is on the west side. So these things that we've been talking about, the prairies and the forest have been in the east side, the Anderson, Farm Center is uh, across the road from the dog park and is on the west side of the road. So agriculture in the master plan has a mission of uh, over 40 acres. And with the Anderson Farm Center, we've got three components. The first component is one that people are very familiar with, it, which is the uh, food pantry garden. We started that a number of years ago with some raised beds. Uh, we've also transitioned into a in-ground garden. And that gets connected to the community garden aspect. So the, the food pantry garden is one of 23 plots at the garden. These are 100 feet by 100 feet plots. So these are quarter acre in size. Last year, we worked with several uh, members and we expanded the food pantry garden to one half acre. We raised over 3,400 pounds of fresh vegetables. We provide vegetables to the food pantry that you're familiar with, you've been involved. Okay. Uh, we also work with Belleville Pantry and Verona. And this year we're starting some exploratory discussions with Little John Kitchens. Sure. Uh, food systems is one of our uh, strategies. We want to uh, improve that for the, uh, the community. So with the food pantry garden, we've had this transition uh, where we've had challenges and, and problems with this. One was the, uh, the lack of water which was occurring in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Uh, last year, it was uh, very dry, uh, and there was a drought period in early June. We lost 98 uh, broccoli plants, uh, and that was really a big hit for us. And uh, We came to the conclusion we needed a better system. Uh, we were hand carrying uh, watering cans from sources that were hundreds of feet away, and we started a fundraising project uh, at the end of 2021 uh, to fund a 
uh, irrigation system. And I'm uh, just really pleased to say thank you to the entire community. We received over 35 different individual donations. We've received some grant proposals. Uh, we work closely with our partner, Rooted, uh, and you may know those by the uh, by their activities on the north side of Madison, the uh, Troy Farm Gardens, so that uh, we do have the financing available uh, for the irrigation system. We're looking for it to be put in in the uh, the month of May, and this essentially will mean underground pipes, uh, a PVC pipe system. Uh, these will last for decades, and then we will have a uh, above ground spigot, much like your residential. Uh, spigot. It'll be about two feet, three feet high, and uh, each person that leases these plots uh, will be able to hook up a uh, ordinary garden hose. Okay. Uh, the third part that uh, I need to mention is part of the uh, activities for the future, uh, and this will be we're going to we're allocating 25 acres to uh, small businesses, small growers. These are private individuals who will lease the land two to five acres perhaps for an extended period of time. And they will be able to grow things that they would like and then uh, be able to sell them uh, in farmer markets to organizations like schools, hospitals and places like that. So we have three things going on. Uh, this is still in progress. We've got the food pantry garden established. That's number one. We're looking forward to a good year in 2022. The, the community gardens, these are 22 gardens, same size, 100 by 100 feet. Uh, we lease five or six to local residents, uh, members of Anderson Park Friends. The other remaining ones, about 17 or 18, are leased to uh, Hmong families that live uh, around Dane County in the Madison area. And this is part of one of our overall strategies for the organization, which is uh, diversity and inclusion. And uh, we work hand in hand with them. Uh, we're gonna have a rock party, Tom. If you'd like to come out to our rock party, uh, the second Saturday of the month, we're picking up rocks. If you're a gardener, you know rocks sort of magically appear each summer. Uh, and uh, we will pick those up, get those out of the way because they're a nuisance for cutting grass and a variety of other things. So uh, we'll have more information next year on the small business uh, components of that. So you've mentioned actually a couple of events now, the, the dog park opening and some, some plans for that. You've also mentioned here this, this rock, rock picking party. Um, are there some other events that we should be getting on our calendars? Uh, there are. There's uh, some fun things going on. We're not all work and no play. People think of us as uh, re taking out brush and building prairies and pulling out weeds, but we have uh, a variety of recreational and educational activities. Uh, educational activities include, uh, we have a sugar maple, uh, maple syrup day for second graders with the Brooklyn Elementary School. Uh, April 29th, we're working with uh, the Rome Corners School. We're bringing out probably about 60 or 70 sixth graders to the uh, uh, Schultz Forest. We're working closely with Arbor Systems, a local business located nearby. Uh, Arbor Systems will set up five educational stations uh, at the picnic area. And uh, the interesting thing about one of the stations is that we will hook up uh, ropes and harnesses uh, and we'll teach some of the, the students how to climb a tree uh, with a pulley system and ropes and straps. Uh, we put safety helmets on them. The kids actually love it. So if 60 first. people come out, six, 59 out of 60 kids want to climb the tree and uh, do those fun things. So that's coming up April 29th. Uh, one of the uh, art projects are, are big to us. As you may know, we uh, installed a metal sculpture last year in the park, uh, just off of the parking lot. Uh, this was worked with the uh, Dane County Parks and the Kelsher family. Uh, that was an interesting project. We have that going again this year. That was a, a somewhat of a precedent setting project for Dane County. Uh, they weren't, uh, uh, they didn't have their policies updated to accept donations like art to the park. And we've been an advocate of this. So we put that in last year. We have another art project going now that people can participate in. And we call this our Woodland Ferry Door Trail. So this is a series of 13 ferry doors. Ferry doors are small art objects that are probably 18 inches by 12 inches. 
Uh, they're the front end of a house and there's a fairy sitting on the stoop, so to speak. <laughs> These are placed in the woods, uh, close to the trails. Uh, and it's a project for small family or for families with small children to get them out, to encourage them to come out and hike. Uh, we started that last year with seven houses. Now we have 13. And uh, we start people at South Main Street. There's a mailbox there with uh, some information about the, uh, the project. We have information on our website if people are interested. And uh, this last week, I met a couple families and they love the idea. It uh, was a good reason. The kids were just enthralled with the art objects. So uh, we're looking forward to that project. We have another one coming up, which we call the ABC Rock Scavenger Hunt. Uh, 26 rocks, one for each letter of the alphabet. We're working with eight or nine artists who are painting uh, art on it. For example, the letter E, you might guess, has an eagle on it. Uh, the artists paint a, uh, an eagle, and then there's uh, more painting on the reverse side. These are placed next to the hiking trails. Once again, it's designed to get people to come out to the park, look for those, uh, and, and take a hike, get your walk and your steps in. We're gonna have a kickoff event May 6th. Uh, this will be from four to uh, 7 p.m. There might be a couple of grade school classes coming out earlier uh, in the day. The other thing that we're really excited about, and we'll be announcing this in more detail to the community, few people know, but Oregon is gonna be on the map for all gardeners across uh, Dane County and probably Southern Wisconsin. The Obrick Garden Society does an annual garden tour uh, every year. Traditionally, it's been in other communities, but it's coming to Oregon this year. There'll be six private gardens. They are, are secret at this time. I've been <laughs> sworn to secrecy that uh, these will be announced the day of the, uh, the event. This will be July 8th and July 9th. Uh, we are going to be listed, Anderson Farm County Park and Anderson Park Friends will be listed in some of their publicity as another point of interest for uh, gardeners and people that uh, like native plants. Uh, we have five or six different native plant gardens. We have two rain gardens, a variety of uh, native plant gardens. We're doing some more gardens. I think we'll build another three of them. This year, uh, we work with uh, about eight or nine different volunteers for that. Uh, fast forward to later in the year, we do our uh, first Saturday of November. That's our annual candlelight. Uh, walk and uh, bonfire event that's so popular. Last year, we had 750 people. Uh, mm -hmm. We were overwhelmed by the uh, success of the event. Uh, we had over 750 people come out. We light up the forest trails with uh, luminaries and tiki torches. Uh, we work with the Oregon Public Library for what we call a storyboard trail. So the library comes up with a concept where they will take a children's book uh, one page will be placed on what we consider to be lawn signs. And the, uh, the signs are placed about 200 feet apart in the forest and people walk the trail and parents can read the, the book to the children. So we have the uh, storyboard uh, signs placed in the forest as well as the adjacent prairie. So that's, that's quite popular. Wow. It's going to be a busy year in 2022 <laughs> for us. Well, you mentioned the fairy garden I, I, or the fairy uh, yeah, the fairy garden items. I, I I noticed those as I was walking through. They're very colorful. They're very small. You can you could walk right by them and, and not even notice them. But they are interesting. It's something to to see while you're walking there. Um, while I was walking around, one of the things I noticed out on the this I think it was out kind of on the east edge. There's some signs referencing taking out a row of uh, trees, uh, some some brush, and that you're going to be developing a prairie savanna restoration area and a it kind of looks like prop land right now. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? I, the signs sort of make me wonder. Uh, that's, that's a good point, Tom. Thanks for asking that. We do put out signs explaining what and why we're doing to uh, people that walk through the park. And that project uh, in particular is a uh, project uh, connected to wildlife and birds in particular. Uh, we have the Schultz Prairie, which is a five acre parcel there was a tree line between that and the adjacent field. Now, the, uh, one of the things people don't know is that the uh, fields that look like agriculture in the park are leased out to private uh, farmers and they can, uh, 
they can grow crops. Uh, the county has a provision in the lease that they can change the purpose of that agricultural field with six months notice. So we gave notice to the farmer uh, and then we took the trees out in November and we uh, also planted prairie seed on those four acres uh, in January of this year. So the concept here is that we're expanding the Schultz Prairie from five acres to nine acres. And we are doing that to support uh, birds that nest on the ground. Um, and one of the features for those kind of birds is that they do not like uh, nesting areas that are close to walking paths. So they need a larger than uh, normal area for nesting so they can get a sense of uh, security, be safe from uh, foxes and other uh, potential predators. So, so uh, one of the things, I guess, the we've talked about a lot of individual product projects and I guess maybe could you just describe the long-term vision for this park? I, it seems like it's going a great direction, but I think, you know, where is it going? What, what do you see as a long-term future for the park? The, uh, uh, the park is going to be a combination of uh, more of the same things I've referred to the, uh, we're going to be doing more forest restoration work on the Western part of the, the park. Uh, what few people know that there's a 45 acre forest out there and that needs some attention. And we hope to restore that as well as build brand new oak savanna areas adjacent to that. Uh, and this would include more hiking trails. We continually do needs assessment with our members in the community. And the number one uh, subject this last year, this last November was more hiking trails. So we're gonna be doing more of that on uh, the Western part of the, the park. Uh, if you were walking the area, you would be walking on Locust Grove Road, go underneath the railroad trestle, uh, and then look to the right. And uh, there's a large parcel of land there, agricultural fields, as well as the 45 acre forest, which is quite far back from the, the road. Uh, it takes uh, a while to get there. So there'll be more prairies that'll go into there, as well as the, uh, the forest restoration work. The needs assessment uh, shows a interest in recreation. That uh, probably means uh, putting in a park shelter. Uh, this would be somewhat adjacent to the uh, Schultz Prairies that I'm referring to. It'd be in the area that we park cars in, just south of the, uh, the area. Uh, but once again, this is a very large project. Uh, I think we'll need to uh, wait until the next five-year plan for the County Parks Department. Uh, and once again, this will be a very expensive ones and our needs are going to get uh, compared to the needs of other parks. Uh, sure. So that uh, that will be something we will also be trying to expand the Anderson Farm Center uh, to this small business concept. Uh, and that perhaps will include a building or two, uh, as well as uh, more detailed work and uh, connecting that activity, all three activities, food pantry garden, community gardens, and the uh, small business portion connecting that to food systems in Oregon, as well as uh, Southern Dane County. So we'll be doing a lot of outreach and trying to uh, see where the needs are and, and connect people to uh, this resource for the community. It really, the Farm Center is one of the most uh, unique things in the park system. We are one of three parks out of 26 that have this. Uh, Schumacher Park in the North area by Wanakee, and then, uh, Silverwood down by Albion has another one as well. And we, we collaborate with them as well. So, well, I, I mentioned earlier, there's a webpage and I'm hoping that everybody can, can go out to that webpage. I think there's information on how they can uh, provide support and different information about the park there. And I would really encourage people to go out and look at that. That's Anderson Farms County Park. Um, as we wrap this up, uh, Ro, what is the key message you'd like to leave our listeners with about Anderson Park? Well, I think we really want people to understand who we are as individuals. We're dedicated to conservation and development of this park. So it includes agriculture and recreation, that our strategies are that of being organic in what we do. Uh, we want to be uh, native in terms of uh, what we do and that uh, we're looking for long-term benefits for the, the community. Our focus areas, I've talked about the forests, the prairies, food systems, education, and recreation. But I, I think the one thing that they need to understand about us is we're very outcome focused so that uh, we have some great volunteers. 
Uh, we have 214 members. Uh, we have an outstanding board that's uh, very conscious about uh, achieving certain things and showing some results for the money we receive, as well as for our activities. And if you were to take six words to describe us, it would be grit, growth, and breaking new ground. It, it really describes the past nine years, and I think it'll describe the next nine years as well. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today, Ro. Anderson Park has been a wonderful new resource for those living here in the Oregon area. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of interesting things happening there for many years. And congratulations on, on a wonderful project and, and the, all your accomplishments. Thank you. Uh, I get a lot of compliments like that, and it really goes to the many volunteers. We had over 3,000 hours of volunteer uh, time. Our board each of those individuals volunteer over $300 each year. So uh, the credit is really shared to over 100 people in the, the community. So I appreciate your comment and or compliment and I'll pass that along to them. Thanks a lot, Ro. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome, thank you. That wraps up another episode of the Oregon Minute. Tune in each week for, to hear from our community leaders and organizations in the Oregon area. If you have comments or suggestions or have an idea for an episode, we'd love to hear from you please contact us at ocamedia.com. Thanks for watching. You're watching OCA Media, your Oregon Community Access Station.